हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम डॉक्टर विवेक राज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायोटेक्नोलॉजी पटना वुमेन्स कॉलेज टुडे आई विल डिस्कस अबाउट सेंट्रीफ्यूज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इन केस ऑफ सेंट्रीफ्यूज वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट इट्स इंट्रोडक्शन ओके सो सेंट्रीफ्यूज इज द मोस्ट पॉपुलर टेक्निक इन बायोलॉजिकल साइंसेज टू सेपरेट पार्टिकल्स और सेल्स यूजिंग अ सेंट्रीफ्यूज अ सेंट्रीफ्यूज इज अ डिवाइस दैट यूजेज सेंट्रीफ्यूगल फोर्स दैट इज G force to separate particles from a suspension. Separation of particles depends on size, shape, density, viscosity, temperature, and rotor speed. Centrifugation should only be used when the dispersed material is denser than the medium. In a solution, higher density particle sediments under influence of the gravitational field. The movement of particles under the gravitational force is called sedimentation, as we all know. When the centrifugal force is applied by the centrifuge, particles move faster when g is greater, isn't? For example, when sand particles are added to the water-filled bucket, it travels. slower but the sediment faster when the bucket is swung around in a circle the biological materials shown a drastic increase in sedimentation when they undergo under acceleration in centrifugal force a relative centrifugal force which is in short form it is called as rcf is expressed as a multiple of the acceleration g due to gravity it is mentioned in the diagram you are seeing here the different components of centrifuge like power switch usb control panel point of emergency lid opening lid inspection glass etc inside the centrifuge there is a rotor which has to be assembled by an operator rotors are of different types depending to small size rpm etc its main component include motor axle rotor rotor lid complete clamps in this slide we will know about the principle of centrifuge basically three principles are here centrifuge works on the principle of centrifugation second one is centrifugation occurs by centrifugal force third one is centrifugal force sediment heterogeneous mixture for centrifugation solution containing biomolecules are suspended in a centrifuge with a balance of opposite centrifuge tubes on a rotor and spun at a defined speed the applied centrifugal force is determined by the radial distance of the particle from the axis of rotation if the angular velocity of particle and the radial distance of a particle represented by small r the applied centrifugal field is capital g which would be written as capital g is equal to omega square r as represented in equation 1 if the mass of the particle small m centrifugal force capital f then f is equal to small m capital g which is equal to m square r then comes angular velocity omega is equal to 2 pi s where s is mean for frequency all right then comes in the next slide frequency s can be defined as the number of revolutions per second we can express the angular velocity per minute then this 2 pi rpm per 60 means divided by 60 it will be uh, uh, said as a equation second then uh, putting the value of equation 2 in the equation 1 we will get capital g is equal to 4 pi square rpm whole square upon 3600 this would be the third equation the centrifugal field in is generally expressed in multiples of the gravitational field g and here the g value is 9681 cm per 
per second square. Relative centrifugal force RCF is the ratio of the centrifugal acceleration capital G and gravitational acceleration small g. Then comes RCF is equal to capital G upon small g. And finally, in this slide, we will uh, able to uh, see the value. Putting the value of capital G from the previous equation, that is uh, equation number 3, RCF will now be equal to 4 pi square R, then RPM whole square upon 3600, then RPM, RCF will be, uh, uh, then RCF will be uh, said as uh, dimensionless, you can say, uh, so the relative centrifugal force RCF applied to the uh, particle in centrifugation can be calculated, isn't Finally, in this slide, we will able to see that what are the types of centrifuge. Basically, there are two types of centrifuge procedures. First one is preparative centrifuge, which involves only the isolation of specific particles. While the second one is analytical centrifuge, which involves measuring the physical properties of the sedimenting particles. Then comes types of centrifuge on the basis of sedimentation of particles in a centrifuge. It is mainly categorized into three types. First one is density gradient centrifugation, which is further of two types. One is isopycnic or sedimentation equilibrium centrifugation and the Second one is rate zonal centrifugation, isn't? And then the second uh, type is called as differential uh, centrifugation, and the third one is called as ultra centrifugation. So let's come to the first type, that is density gradient separation or centrifugation. So in this case, it is used to separate particles on the basis of size and density, small s and rho. By employing a medium of graded densities, therefore different particles are found to obtain in different bands containing different sizes and densities of particle layered over a density. Then comes to the first type that is isopycnic separation. Here it is a type of density gradient separation also known as buent or equilibrium separation where particles move until their density is the same as the surrounding medium. Then comes to the second type that is rate zonal density gradient centrifugation. Here it is also known as band or gradient centrifugation which relies on the concept of sedimentation coefficient. That means movement of sediment through the liquid medium. The second type is differential centrifuge. This depends upon the sedimentation rate of particles of different sizes and densities. Centrifugation will initially sediment the largest particle first. And the third one, the third type is ultra filtration separation means here it is the pressure driven separation process that is governed by a screening principle dependent on particle size. The ultra filtration membrane has a pore size between 1 nanometer and 100 nanometer thus allowing the retention of compounds with a molecular weight of 300 to you can say 5 lakh daltons. Then coming to the next slide, you can see the above different types of centrifuges in the diagram. And then again coming to the next slide, you can able to see the types of centrifuge on the basis of speed of rotors and requirements. There are mainly three types of centrifuge. The first one is called as the low speed centrifuge. Here. It is used for routine work applying sedimentation of heavy particles. Most laboratories use a standard low speed centrifuge which has a maximum speed of 4000 to 5000 rpm. These instruments usually operate at room temperature which no means of with no means of temperature control. This type of centrifuge has two types of rotor. 
fixed angle rotor and swinging bucket rotor. It is used for the sedimentation of red blood cells until the particles are tightly packed into a pellets and the supernatant is separated by decantation. Diagram is showed in this slide. High speed, the second one is called as high speed centrifuge. This type of centrifuge has high speed rotors and is used in more sophisticated biochemical application. The high speed centrifuge uh, has a temperature control mechanism in the rotor chamber because most of the biochemical have optimal thermal requirements. It has a maximum speed of 15,000 to 20,000 RPM. Generally, it has three types of rotor, fixed angle, swinging bu bucket and the third one is added here that is vertical rotors. In this centrifuge, the speed and temperature that are required for sensitive biological samples can be controlled. Dry diagram is also shown in this slide. Just you can see here and the third type of centrifuge is ultra centrifuge. It is the most sophisticated instrument which has a maximum speed of 65,000 RPM. Since intense heat is generated due to its ultra high speed, the spinning or rotor chambers must be refrigerated and kept at a high vacuum. It is used for both preparative and analytical work, means for isolation and analysis both. However, according to their app, Applicability, there are so many categorization of centrifuge such as micro centrifuge, small bench, top centrifuge, general purpose centrifuge and large capacity centrifuge. Diagram is shown in this slide also. And coming to the next slide, we will see the application of centrifuge. It has a wide variety of application from laboratory investigation to industrial practices. Some common applications of centrifuge are given below, like first, production of bulk drugs means in pharma sector. It has a great role in the bulk drug industry. Whenever a crystalline material is to be separated from suspension, it is done by centrifugation. Example, aspirin is separated from its mother liquor. The second application is production of biological products like it is used in the separation of blood cells purification of insulin by selectively precipitating other fractions of proteins and separation of most of the proteinaceous drug and macromolecules then comes to the third application that is biopharmaceutical analysis of drugs drugs present in blood tissue fluid and urines are normally present in the form of colloidal dispersion. Centrifuge, centrifugation is used for separating the drugs which are essential for the evaluation of pharmacokinetic parameters and also bioequivalence studies. Then comes to the next slide, the precautions. What type of precautions we should uh, avail there okay like use of safety goggles to avoid aerosols which are present in the sample during the centrifugation the second one comes use a face shield the, th the third one is uh, the use of surgical gloves because uh, the uh, gloves will uh, avoid contamination then comes the work surface or the machine must be in level damage centrifuge axis should be checked the tube in the rotor whether it is balanced or not and then comes do not open the lid while the rotor is moving just to prevent any type of incident that is blast etc during abnormal vibration or wobbling or shaking of the centrifuge just switch off the power and pull plug out to prevent the electrical shock do not move the centrifuge while the rotor is spinning 
and finally comes to the conclusion that thus we can see that the centrifuge machine is an essential separation device for every biological and clinical laboratory as well as a medical practice. So finally, thank you. Thank you all.